Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Got a one versus one for you today between Tag Rock and White Death. These are two roughly evenly matched players. 1775 for one and 1648 for the latter scores. And both of these guys have been around since the GPG days. They're old players. Maybe not old people. I have no idea how old they actually are, but they've definitely been around for a long time. So I am terribly sorry about not getting a cast out yesterday. I ran into to some technical difficulties and then just not was it. Dab, 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 dab. Let me restart that. I was not able to get it out last night. Let me see if I can get it out tonight after I get my tongue untied. Um, and tonight I had to work super late, so I am just running through this cast in OBS. Going to get it out as quickly as I possibly can and upload it for you guys so that I'm not any later. Hopefully the Saturday cast will be a return to normalcy. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up. I did watch this game last night. Unfortunately, the settings were screwed up and I, yeah, so it wasn't usable. But I know what's going to happen in this game, so I should be able to not miss much at plus two or so and just get this game out of the way. So White Death is going to start with a double air factory build, land factory start. Lots of engineers headed out. Let's hit the shift key and see where those guys are headed. We got some manual reclaim mass extractor, manual reclaim, manual reclaim, manual reclaim, which is basically what you want to be doing at the very beginning of the game to boost your build up. You got to get that extra mass in your pocket so that you can spend it on all kinds of shiny new toys. And that is a glorious chunk of reclaim right there. You can literally reclaim an entire mountain if you're looking at the scale of Supreme Commander. That is a gargantuan chunk of mass. On the right hand side, we have Tag Rock in the red. This is a Cybern versus Cybern matchup, by the way. He is going for the aggressive stance. We have overbuilding. Two engineers headed to this expansion in the south right there. You can see these two guys. And then two expansion engineers to the north. Whereas Tag Rock is going for one engineer to each position, left and right. And devoting his early build power to lots of hunters. We have a pair heading down to the south, which are probably going to intercept these two engineers. And then we've got one headed up to the north. He is not going quite as heavy on his air build, which means he doesn't have to build as much power. And he's throwing down a second land factory. So we've got land, air, land, and land, air, air for the matchup. That means that White Death is probably going to have a larger air or a better air stance at the beginning of the game. Who knows about later, but at least for the beginning. That picked up the hunter very nicely or actually it killed something. What was it? Scout. Did not see it as it went past. And it's going to back up and kill that scout right there so that hunter is a win and then on the south side yes both engineers killed off so those little guys are going to run back down here and kind of stay in hiding and see what else comes their way mantis going to push in on the north much sturdier unit but there is a mantis answering from tag rock those guys are going to engage and we have a bypass trying to kill off the engineer but i don't think it's going to be successful because we have a second mantis heading up right there acu out to the front for tag rock little bit more aggressive stance you can just see it in kind of every little thing that happens um few more combat units few less engineers a little bit more forward positioning with the acu he's just setting up to be a little bit more aggressive whereas white death is probably going to end up doing an eco build here we go with the transport it's going to pick up a ton of engineers hopefully speed up his expansion into the outer edges of the map because he lost all of his expansion years and as we all know that is a terrible thing to go through those guys are a hard loss to take a cued drop pattern quick tip for you guys because i've had a lot of people ask me how to do this select your transport select an engineer place your drop order with the shift key to queue it select your next engineer place a drop point select your next engineer place a drop point etc 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 if you have six engineers and you drop the first three individually and then place a master drop order it will drop all remaining units in the transport at the final location so that's how you queue up that little sucker and that is how you get units all over the place very very quickly now you know another little tip that i was going to let you guys in on because i noticed trees following just a minute or not following falling just a minute ago um if you have no intel on a certain area of the map if you have no vision and it's all dark and gloomy and you don't know what's going on in the back there you can actually get a sneak peek at what units are coming and that was a nasty little loss for tag rock it is absolutely astounding how quickly 
just having a two tank advantage swings the battle in your favor because your superior damage is able to decrease the damage potential of the other person faster. So that means an exponential win as you fight longer. If you have five tanks, engage three tanks, it is actually possible to have all five of yours live and kill all three of the other players. It's just what happens. And I do love the little bit of aggression on the south side. Little run by. Little run bys never hurt. They usually help. Anyway, as I was saying, if you're curious about what's coming your way, and this kind of specifically applies to Sutton's front, but it does happen on any other maps with trees as well, you can kind of zoom in and see the trees falling. And that will let you know what type of unit and how many of them are headed towards you in the very, very early game. Or if you just need a quick peek at one corner of the map or another, you can see the trees falling, you can gauge the rough speed and size, possibly number of units moving in that direction, and it'll give you a little insight into a place where you don't necessarily have radar or vision radius. I don't know if it's technically cheating, but it is kind of using a bit of intel not necessarily advertised in your field of vision, so yeah, take it as what you will, you can get a sneak peek that way. Little bit forward for White Death, not much, he's still kind of hanging towards the back here. Tag Rock is again positioned much more aggressively, and this is actually a reclaim field. There's a few T2 tanks up on this ridge, which I'm sure is what Tag Rock was getting at. And other than that, it looks like things have pretty much evened out. We have a nice little raiding group over here. There is one solitary Mantis guarding five engineers that are going for the reclaim and the mass extractor and the hydro right here and it looks like those three mantis are going to be able to kill all of them every freaking one before any assistance can come in and no beautiful reclaim patterns from white death he is actually going to succeed in reclaiming all three mantis coolio kudos to you good sir quick reaction times tag rock apparently forgot that he placed those units there or he was refocused somewhere else and just let him get reclaimed Sad, sad day. We've got a little expansion going on in the north. White Death has pushed a land factory across onto what is technically Tag Rock's territory. That's a whole lot of T. Say it ten times fast. Tag Rock is going to push down and put a little pressure here. But for the most part, all of the units are located up in the north. I don't know what the entire point of this is. There are few Mantis there. Yes, you killed the Hydro and the Radar, but not a whole lot else. And that's going to be a hard, hard loss leaving a lot of Mantis Rex right next to the ACU for some tasty reclaim. That's going to put White Death even further ahead on the reclaim numbers. Tag Rock is pulling in 51 mass per tick, which is slightly more than White Death thanks to that last raid. And he has gotten 3,500 reclaim, whereas White Death has pulled in 5k and is getting, let's see, what is his eco at the moment? Looks like 64, so that would actually place him ahead. Tag Rock 55. Versus 64 for White Death, 58, depending on how you read the numbers. When it's blipping up and down with that reclaim, it is a little hard to tell what exactly the stable number is. Large group of Mantis attempting to tear into the back end of this base. Unfortunately, they're going to have to run by a newly completed T1 point defense. Kudos to Tag Rock for getting that thing up in there. And that means that a lot of tanks are going to die in this little passage here. And tanks streaming in versus bunched up tanks. We all know how that goes. Don't hover your interceptors over anti-air. That's the lesson we all learn here. When you stream units in versus a clump of units, that means you have seven or eight mantis firing versus one or two that are firing back. And as we all know, that dis disproportional damage potential ratio, when you have a bunch of units versus a few units, yeah, you're basically not accomplishing anything because all of your units are going to die as they stream in. We do have T2 Land Factory online with a second T2 power generator going down for Tag Rock. That's going to give him a little bit of a power advantage, even though he does have a mass disadvantage. We do have a T2 Factory online for White Death that has just been completed. Not a single T2 unit on the field as of yet. Nice little point defense work down here for Tag Rock. Snipe those two little mass extractors. If I were him, I'd throw down a Land Factory and maybe get a Medusa or three knock out that point defense and actually be able to do some damage but as it is he still claimed a little bit of territory and denied a couple of mass extractors so I would say that it is a win that is an early t3 land factory holy cow that explains why tag rock has given up so much territory so willingly he has gone for the tech advantage and when he gets that tech advantage here's the reason why you tech up quickly 
You can give up map control. You can get your T3 units online, which are so vastly superior to T1 units that really T1 can't compete at all. You use your T3 units to take over a couple of expansions of your enemy, knock them out so quickly that they don't know what hit them before they can get T3 online to answer you. You've got all the reclaim, and then you can use that to boost yourself back up and get on the same footing eco-wise as your opponent is on. So not quite ready for the push. He tried a little bit with T1, but there's just so many units and so many factories online that he doesn't really have a prayer of competing. But we have a second loyalist and a third moving up. Once he gets those all in a clump, he'll be able to start kiting in. Now White Death knows that T3 is on the field. That was giving up that secret just a little bit early for my taste, but I'm sure Tag Rock knows what he's doing. He could sure cream me on a ladder match. Ranked far, far ahead of where I'm at. Barely pulling a 1K rank on ladder. <laughs> but then again, I don't really play ladder, so that's kind of self-explanatory. Now that we have a couple of Mantis on the front, as I said before, T1 cannot hope to compete whatsoever. So this entire expansion is going to go down. You can see the vast horde of T1 engineers that is approaching that position to do some ring claiming. Right now they're sucking down trees and an occasional wreck, but once this is all cleared out, those guys will be able to chew down on the real mass. T1 point defense going down in mass on the southern end for Tag Rock. Going to try to help prevent that run by, and thanks to some speedy loyalists, those Medusas are getting nowhere. So lots of T3 units on the field, 7-8 by my count. And we do not yet have a T3 factory for White Death. He is pulling one online, but he only has about 10 mass per tick advantage eco-wise over Tag Rock. And that is actually shrinking and going to continue to shrink as these loyalists shred the outer expansions that White Death has held for so long. And we're probably going to see these reclaim numbers swap. White Death so far with almost 17k reclaim. Tag Rock pulling in 10k, which is a significant increase over the last time we checked in with them. 81 versus 71 mass per tick. Very, very close. And I imagine within another minute or so, Tag Rock will be ahead on Eco. T1 point defense going down. To those loyalists pushing through and they're gonna go ahead and take a trek around to the back side Medusa's raining fire down unfortunately not going to connect because of a beautiful little dodge however unintentional it may have been from those loyalists loyalists gonna engage the t1 point defense it looks like yeah they have a close to similar range to the t1 point defense actually they do have to get within range to hit them but the t1 point defense don't have a huge range advantage over the Loyalist. Maybe just a little bit, but not too terribly much. White Death doing a very smart thing here. He is maximizing the potential of his group of units by throwing down a couple of Cerberus turrets. This would be an aggressive turtle. It's basically a fallback position. If your units start weakening, your ranks start thinning out, you just fall back within reach of the point defense. Loyalists can't outrange the Cerberus turrets, so they have to take damage instead of kiting out of reach of the T1 units. That just kind of extends the lifespan of your units and helps lay down some more damage. We do have bricks rolling out for White Death. I don't think he built a single Loyalist. He is going straight for the bricks, the powerhouse that can eliminate the Loyalist threat. There's a couple right down here that are going to die pretty easily because, yeah, it looks like Tagrog did not notice quick enough. Gonna get a little damage in, but not too terribly much. Loyalists are beautifully strong units. Very, very fast, but unfortunately they just cannot tank the damage like a brick can. Bricks are second only to the Percival in damage potential and health. Same range, and why? Why are you doing this? Focus firing and T1 point defense. Yay for screwed up hitboxes. It's going to instead shred the health of the last wall section, and that guy, well, he did survive. 50 health. I don't think he's long for this world, though, because I spy a Corsair. Took T2 air long enough to get here. 19 minutes into the game, and we're finally seeing a T2 unit. Cheeky bastards of an engineer just trying to sneak up here and reclaim all of these guys. Point defense to the rescue. If they can get it built before they all get reclaimed, that is. And there's the Corsair. Knocking out that Loyalist. Well, it took some loyalists to get up there and eliminate that threat, but eliminate it, they did. And so this beachhead is still secure. Tag Rock pulling 125 mass per tick. Looks like White Death is down around 87. 131 
versus 87. We got 15k reclaim for Tag Rock and 24k for White Death. So still a huge lead for White Death. It looks like he is just being a little more efficient with his reclaim. Not entirely sure how that is happening. Tag Rock went for some major mechs upgrades. That looks like a dozen, yes. T2 Mass Extractors versus 11. But he has a lot more T1 because he is starting to knock out these expansions. He's eliminated this huge chunk right here. It's about 10 mass extractors gone down. And he has claimed all of these for himself. So he's sitting on roughly 50% map control with all of his mechs as claimed. Versus White Death's 50% with maybe a quarter of the mass extractors. Actually more like a third of the mass extractors knocked out. It looks like the numbers are still a little skewed. There we go. 187 versus, or 87 versus 142, maybe. 140-ish income. Realistically speaking, the reclaim is the only reason that White Death is still in the position that he is in. Both of these guys are doing a beautiful job poking and prodding and wiggling their way into all the cracks and crevices in the other player's defense. But thanks to superior mass harvesting, White Death has managed to maintain just a few more units than Tag Rock has for pretty much the entire game. Down to just the Medusas from that beautiful battle group that he started with. Flak, Loyalist, Medusas... Just about the whole picture. They're going to get wiped out by Corsairs. T1 Interceptor's coming in belatedly. And yeah, outnumbered 3 to 1, showing their back. Forgotten move order placed right where the Corsairs used to be. That is going to be a total and complete air victory for White Death. He owns the skies. Might as well go completely for bombers. And uh, go knock out some of this power over here. Five T2 P gens powering Tag Rock's Eco. And every single one of them is exposed, not under a shield. But he does have resource allocation upgrade, so it doesn't really matter if he snipes them anyway. Because, yeah, power built into the ACU. Beat that. I got power till I lose this game. That's the advantage of Ras. Right there, in a nutshell. Um, T3 P gen. Oh, and a Monkey Lord planned. Well, this is interesting. So, what we have here, oh, nice. Brick going around the back side, knocking out a couple of mask extractors. What we have here is Superior Eco, thanks to early tech rush for Tag Rock. He was able to reclaim all of the outlying positions, get his mask extractors in, get some of that reclaim. He's now pulling 33% more mass per tick than White Death is, but White Death has been reclaiming and he owns the air, so these Corsairs are absolutely demolishing these bricks, forcing them back a little bit. We've got multiple flak moving in, and that is going to eliminate the Interceptor advantage right there. Don't hover your Inties over flak. Don't do it. You can see they're just disintegrating in clumps. That was probably a third to half of the Interceptors gone from those flak. And now we're playing Ring Around the Rosie with units. We have a ton of bricks versus a good number of bricks and a lot of supporting units. So these guys are going to move right, these guys are going to move left, and it looks like they're just going to knock out each other's bases. To be completely honest with you, I think if this group of bricks went northward, the game would be over right now because there's only two, three Cerberus turrets in between those bricks and that ACU. The Monkey Lord is not even a quarter complete yet. Over here, things look a little bit hairier because the T3 HQ is more exposed for Tag Rock if that thing dies. No more T3 units after the ones already loaded in the factory, so that's going to eliminate the build potential for bricks to counter, and Tag Rock is throwing down Cerberus turrets like a madman. Not much damage to each one individually, but they do stack quite nicely. T3 HQ is going to go down for White Death as well. So, we scaled this game all the way from T1 to T3, and now we're getting knocked back to T1. Hopefully, the ACUs have... Oh, those trebuchets, though. <laughs> Actually, there were a couple down here as well. So much T2 power got killed on that one, but there's a T3P gen back here. It's kind of the same situation. There's a nice chunk of power next to or located on the ACU of each player, 
with exposed T2s. Tag Rock hasn't lost his yet, though. These bricks need to be a moving because they are laying way too far back and soaking damage from those Cerberus turrets. T3 HQ is officially offline for White Death. His Monkey Lord is halfway completed, but he is about to lose all the eco. Trebuchet is laying down blanket damage, softening up these targets. That is what they're good at. Lowest DPS of any of the T3 mobile artillery. Highest area of effect. Beautiful unit for applying area damage. Tagrock throwing down more Cerberus turrets. Even he needs to get that overcharge out. Hit some of the nice little clumps before those things get within range of his ACU. Loyalist moving down from the north. Those speedy bastards getting in there to save that ACU from what could potentially be a dangerous situation but is rapidly disintegrating. So... White Death knocked down to 71 mass per tick, but still reclaiming like a boss. Tag Rock up to 128 mass per tick. Both players have lost their T3 HQs, and now we have an interesting situation. Because we have a Monkey Lord almost 25% complete that is basically being built off of reclaim at this point. Lots of engineers, lots of wrecks. I think he will probably make it. Tag Rock has tons and tons of mass, but he doesn't really have a way to spend it because he lost his T3 HQ. He does have T3 on his ACU, so he needs to start something and burn that mass, like, now. And, yeah, very, very interesting setup. This break is just having a heyday down there. 40 kills on that sucker before it died, at minimum. And if you're wondering, it's because I remember it from the replay yesterday. I checked it right before it died, and it had 40 kills. So, take my word for it, 40+. plus. Bricks continuing to wreck this base. The last of the T2 mass extractors going down. Oh, nope, there's one right there. One, two T2 mass extractors left. A whopping... Come on, stop reclaiming. Let me see the numbers. 50 mass per tick. But lots of reclaim going down the hatch. 42k in the bank versus 23k so literally double the reclaim and the monkey lord is on its way and here lies the issue that monkey lord was scouted by the way tag rock falling back a little bit but i don't think there's enough time or mass to build an, an opposing monkey lord before that one gets to the base we have loyalists we have bricks i think both of these together with an overcharge from the acu could kill the monkey lord and then basically white death is dead in the water because he's been demolished he's hiding in the water he has nothing left to defend himself with he barely has any eco or build power but he has a monkey lord the bricks can't make it to the monkey lord before the monkey lord makes it to the base and the loyalists have been shredded by the three remaining bricks on the field belonging to white death so basically everything is coming together for a perfect catastrophe for Tag Rock. He is trying to build a Monkey Lord, but as I said, he does not have enough build power on it and there's not enough time before that sucker gets there. 32 mass per tick and overflowing power. Wowzers. 190 income and burning all of it. 143 actually. That was a reclaim blip. If he had been applying build power this entire time, started the Monkey Lord about a minute and a half ago, I think he would be fine. His only chance now, I do believe, is to throw down some shielding and try to overcharge the Monkey Lord to death, but I don't think that is really a viable option because that guy is getting very, very close and he is about to vet. He is 11 kills from veterancy, although those Cerberus turrets are doing a pretty dang good job of eating away at the health. Already eaten through 9,000 health. And now they're all going to die. There's the veterancy. The damage is undone. Monkey Lord not even halfway. This is this is literally the worst thing that could happen at this point. Because Tag Rock, on technicality, won this game. Throwing out the well played. Running his ACU forward to take the laser to the face. And getting off an overcharge before he dies, which is not going to do a whole lot of good. Fighting to the end, going down, kicking and screaming, but the nuclear fire knows your weaknesses. Um, yeah, Tag Rock won, essentially. I say that, and I know I'm not right, because it said White Death Victor, Tag Rock defeated, but he killed off the entire map and was technically superior in his execution. However, 
the old good old subcom mechanics where you can sit in the corner and build a T4 and hope for an ACU snipe lost him the game that reclaim from white death kept him in the game got him a monkey lord online and then he basically chillaxed with his ACU in the pond and shoved that monkey lord way up into tag rocks base and then ACU um, yeah pretty awesome game well done to both of these players kudos on the good gameplay alrighty guys I'm out of here I'm going to exit OBS and punch the upload button I hope that it turns out okay maybe I got my settings straight this time I am terribly sorry once again for not sticking to the upload schedule I do try to do that as much as I possibly can for you guys but sometimes life just conspires against me if you knew how my week was this week you would totally understand Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap it up for me. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please send me your replays and I will see you guys in the next cast. Adios.